Welcome to Kingdom Come Now broadcast, brought to you by Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. We are an apostolic, prayer, healing, deliverance, and prophetic global ministry. And our overseers are Apostle and Prophets Dr. Kilafo Z. Kali, MD, and Shalewa Kali. Our ministry is built on the apostolic and prophetic model, and the foundation of our ministry is Jesus Christ and His Kingdom. Located in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Bahamas, the ministry celebrates 10 years of dedicated service. Parenthetically, our leaders also oversee Kingdom Apostolic Global Networks and have commissioned over 800 apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists in over 30 nations, including South, East, and West Africa, Asia, USA, Bahamas, and the Caribbean. Visit us at www.kamgbahamas.com. We are located at Nios Grace Center, West Atlantic Drive, Freeport, Bahamas. Let's go straight into the broadcast. Praise the Lord. God bless you. It's so good to see you. I'm Dr. Kilafo Kali, and uh, we are starting a wonderful new topic uh, concerning the kingdom of God. It's called Kingdom deliverance and the prophetic. I'm telling you, praise the Lord. What an awesome time we're going to have. I want you to sit back, call your friends, your family, and your loved ones concerning this message. We are going strictly into a very critical message Jesus taught, which is about the kingdom of God. Uh, I want you to get your notepad. See, the kingdom of God is the rulership of Christ. You've heard it, and we're going to dive into it. What does it mean to live in the kingdom of God? Jesus is God. He's Lord on the Psalm 145, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion is forever. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talks about seeking this kingdom. So I've spent the last oh, about 15 years just studying in depth the kingdom, sitting at the feet of men and women of God around the world, and reading and studying on this kingdom message, this kingdom teaching. I began to live it with my family. I began to teach it. I began to walk it out. And I'm telling you, since I've been seeking the kingdom, all things has been added. And I'm so delighted to be coming into your homes. Thank you for having us here at Kingdom Apostolic Ministry. Come into your homes or wherever you are listening and watching these teachings. It's been a joy for Shalewa and I and our family and the family here at the ministry. We bless God for you. We thank the Lord for you. Sit back, relax, learn the principles of the kingdom, understand the deliverance. The deliverance Jesus has for us. And also, I want you to understand and watch the prophetic. I believe God is going to release a prophetic ministry upon you today. Direct word of the Lord for you and for your life and for your family and for you pastors and ministers listening and watching. God bless you. We love you and stay tuned. May you be blessed today. Castle demons, no doubt the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Okay? Jesus is saying, if I do ministry of deliverance, the ministry of deliverance, preaching, teaching, and casting out demons is a major part of kingdom ministry. It means if you are a kingdom ministry, you must cast out demons, heal the sick, and do spiritual warfare. Okay? And it also means if you do spiritual warfare and cast out demons, the kingdom of God is operating in your life and mine. Amen. So we need to move in that level of deliverance. This is the reason why the kingdom of God is very important. Okay. Let's turn to Luke 17 again. Let's turn, stay in the book of Luke. Let's go down to Luke 17 verse 20. If you have that, shout hallelujah. 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 And it says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, this is Jesus answering. They were asking him, just like you and I, when is the kingdom going to come? When is the world going to end? You, you see so many things going on now. When is the end coming? When is it going to be the last days? What's going to be the sign of your coming? Jesus said unto them, the kingdom of God come not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Jesus told them, listen here, do not look for an outward sign only of the kingdom of God. We got to be careful in this 2018, what we're looking at, because, hallelujah, I shared with my wife as we were praying, and we were looking at the world evangelism, the word of God taking place all around the world. If you just look at what's happening 
sometimes the crime, the racial tension, the, the poverty, the disease, the lack. Sometimes you'll get caught up and think Jesus' kingdom isn't expanding. Sometimes you might feel and think, boy, Christianity and church is not relevant. But when you look at what Jesus is saying, he said, be careful that you and I do not look at what we see on the outside. Because the kingdom of God is advancing in people every single day. Every time someone gives their life to Jesus Christ. Every time someone opens up their heart to Jesus Christ. All around the world, God's kingdom is being expanded. Every time demons are cast out of someone. The kingdom of God is expanding. Be careful. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is expanding powerfully. And do you know now with the technology we have, hallelujah, with uh, all of the wonderful online platforms, all of the technology of communications, of videography, of radio, hallelujah, of waves, uh, hallelujah, of satellites, it has made the 2018 and the 21st century, the 20th century, the most advanced century for the advancement of the kingdom of God's message. Amen. Because with one camera, with one radio set, the gospel of the kingdom could go around the world to millions of hallelujah. Amen. Don't play around with God. These are the last and final days. One viral message. Someone could send one message of the love and the blood and the power of Jesus Christ. And that could hit a hundred million. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Hallelujah. We've seen videos that are the most silly and ridiculous going to. 100 million, 50 million views. Do you know that Jesus can get one message and it goes to 200 million people and they come to the Lord? That's how close the gospel is to nations now. Hallelujah. With all the platforms and all the companies, the gospel is that easy to be reached around the world. The message of the kingdom of God can go around the world that easily. Praise God. Now, I want to get to now another passage of building the foundation of why this kingdom message. Why are we sharing this? Why are we talking this? Why are we presenting this? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Are you with me today? Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom, find that, must be preached in all the nations. As a testimony, and then the end will come. Mama Dollar White is going to get that additional scripture. Hallelujah. And then, uh, because it means that our work of the kingdom of God must be progressing. Hallelujah. We must progress. We must teach. We must preach. We must evangelize. We must use every media format, every format, whether song, whether writing, whether preaching, whether whatever platforms are available. We must use all of them. Okay, so now that we have that understanding, as Shalabah is getting that, let's get into now our subtitle today, Kings and Priests. All right, we have on our pre priestly garments today, amen? Hallelujah. Where did this all begin? Let me go through history. You need to get your Bible because we're going to go through history looking at the Word of God. And I will study this extensively. It's very powerful. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Let's look at the beginning of the kingdom of God invading man. What do I mean? Okay, I mean that God's kingdom existed for eternity. Why? The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Thank you. He lives and rules and reigns forever. There is no beginning and end in Him. Hallelujah. How do I know that? Okay, let's turn to uh, two scriptures. Hold Genesis 1. Let's go to, thank you, Shalewa. Matthew 24 and verse 4. And said, and Jesus said, thank you. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. How many know that in 2018 there is much deception? There are so many messages. Why this kingdom message? Where did this kingdom message come from? How did it begin? Where is it going? Jesus said, be careful, you will be deceived. Why? There are so many false teachings out there. 
I've never seen so much false teaching appear like it is appearing today. I've never heard so many new doctrines, so many new philosophies, so many new uh, 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 ideologies. It's, it's, it's amazing. People who were once founded and grounded in the house of God have left the house of God, have left the word of God, have left the power of God. Come on, shout hallelujah. It is a scary time. And never in all my days, I've never seen so many churches closed down, so many pastors backsliding, so many ministers leaving the gospel. I've never seen it at the rate that it's happening. Ah, and in spite of the gospel of the kingdom moving forward, many are sadly falling away from the faith. Why are they falling away from the faith? They are opening up their spirit to so many new doctrines, so many new philosophies, so many new teachings. And these teachings are bringing people into damnation. So Jesus said, in these last and final days, if you just stick to the message of the kingdom, you will be all right. But if you start dabbling into these new books, these occultish teachings, these new sci-fi methodology and ideologies of, of the gospel and the existence of man and of life, you're going to fall away. I will share the amount of healing I've seen. I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears open. My wife and I, all through Asia, we saw that. We have saw demons cast out in the name of Jesus. I don't care what you call him. I know the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the true and living God. He's the only God. Why? I've seen demons cast out many times out of many people over the years in the name of Jesus I've been touched by Jesus' blood. I've been washed. I've been cleansed. I've seen people whose hearts were broken, healed, and mended, and restored in the name of Jesus from India to America, to South America, the Middle East, and all throughout Africa. Don't tell me this Jesus Christ is not real. He is realer than you and I sitting here. Amen. Everything in this world is real. Amen. You and I. Better hold fast to our fate because the devil is coming out with demonic lies greater than ever before to blind God's people. And if you open your heart to deception, you will be sucked away into darkness. Amen. Don't play with the devil in this time. He's no play with him anytime. But it's the worst time to play with the enemy. People of God listen and watching. I don't care how the struggle becomes. Hallelujah. Most of the time people turn away from the gospel of Jesus Christ because the struggle of life, the cares of life, make them feel, boy, God ain't hear me. There must be no God. Jesus didn't deliver me when I was in a time of crisis. Oh, he must be not real. Or someone they love died. Hallelujah. Some miracle they were believing for. Hallelujah. Slipped through their hands. Some life crisis turned their life around. And all of a sudden now, Jesus doesn't exist to them. But I'm encouraging you today. Don't let life circumstances, life's issues, the struggles and the cares of life cause you to deny the reality of who Jesus is. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Amen. We've all gone through it. I've Amen. lost a mother. Hallelujah. 20 years ago, 1998. I didn't give up on Jesus. That made me hold on to him stronger. I've lost a grandmother, a grandfather, three pastors who mentored me. Four went to be with glory. Two in this year alone. Two some years ago. They went on to glory. Hallelujah. I, I picked up my loins and I carried on the mission. What they started. Still working at it. Okay? So don't let life circumstances, don't let a failed marriage, don't let troubled children, don't let, hallelujah, financial distress, don't let the cares of this life cause the devil to come in and steal the truth of the word of God out of your heart. You'll be in a worse place. So that's what the kingdom is about. The kingdom of God is about bringing truth to our lives. Hallelujah. Not letting the, the enemy destroy us. Amen. Stay in that same chapter. Hallelujah. This Matthew 24 says, Hallelujah. Verse 5. Matthew 24 verse 5. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Hallelujah. Don't you see this deception all around the world? Hallelujah. I spoke to a young man yesterday who 
began to share how this person was trying to deceive him. Hallelujah. We got to be careful with these folk out here today. Call themselves men and women of God. They're deceiving. Hallelujah. Now there are many true men and women of God, but hallelujah. Let your foundation be based on the word of God. Amen. That's why here we teach the word of God. And every one of you have a Bible. And you have a Bible. Bible apps are by the hundreds now online. The Bible on YouTube and every media, audio, video, method, all of these wonderful channels, the truth of the gospel. You have no excuse. You and I have no excuse when Jesus comes to say we backslid or we fall or fell away from the faith because someone said something else. Now, lady, there's too much truth online. There's too much truth we have access to now for you and I to backslide. If you don't know something, pick up your smartphone or your smart device and research it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Something in this Bible you don't understand? Go online and research it. Find a, a realistic person who studied this word and give you consultation. Amen? Hallelujah. So Matthew 24, Jesus said, And you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Get ready. We pray for the people in Alaska. Hallelujah. This week, they had an earthquake in Alaska. They're still feeling it. Can you imagine? Jesus said in his word, hallelujah, the same Matthew 24, hallelujah, that there shall be earthquakes. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. This is being fulfilled now. This was spoken 2,000 years ago. And now we are seeing it now. Hallelujah. California. We pray for California. They've had wildfires that have destroyed hundreds of thousands of acres. This last month, over the last two months, I mean, upscale. And hallelujah. And that's been happening for the last few years all throughout we watch anti prophecy and we're seeing stuff in Italy and France. They're not showing on national TV. Flooding, hallelujah, earthquakes in all types of nations, pestilence and disease, hallelujah, strange occurrences. Waters are flooding nations all around the world. It's not on your popular radio and television stations. Hallelujah, but it's happened. But Jesus said, hallelujah, Matthew 24 and 14. Hallelujah. And this gospel, write that, this gospel, say this gospel, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Circle that in your Bible. Read that in your Bible. Make a note of that in your Bible. Do not be alarmed. This message of the kingdom of God, that is why I'm spending so much time studying it, reading it, sharing it with my family, sharing it with this ministry. Hallelujah. That's where we got our name from, Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. Why? Because we are kingdom people. We Amen. believe in the kingdom. We study the kingdom. We Amen. live the kingdom. We demonstrate the kingdom. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. We are apostolic and prophetic. We believe in the apostles' ministry. We believe in the prophets, the pastors, the evangelists, the teachers. Hallelujah. We believe in the priestly order of the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, this gospel, the word gospel means, write this, the word gospel means good news. Say good news. Good news. Say good news. Good news. So the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. The gospel is not a general term. The word gospel means good news. So Jesus is saying himself. Say Jesus is speaking now. Jesus is speaking now. My Bible has it in red. When it's in red, it means Jesus is what? Speaking to you and I. Who is Jesus? Jesus is Lord. Who is Jesus? He is the head of the church. Who is Jesus? The soul coming king. Who is Jesus? The holy Messiah. Who is Jesus? Our savior, our deliverer, and our Lord. So you don't need a pastor to tell you. You don't need a prophet to tell you. You don't need a bishop to tell you. You don't need an apostle to tell you when Jesus said the end is going to come. You don't need a news network. You don't need a fancy book to tell you. If it, if it says what Jesus said, wonderful, good, use it. Listen to that person. 
Follow that ministry. Amen. Praise God. Like these wonderful stations. They're telling you about the gospel of the kingdom. Praise God. Amen. But he's saying something specific. Jesus is saying, let me tell you when I come back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to find out when he's coming out? Listen to the man. He can he tell you when he's coming back. Hallelujah. If you leave this office or this church and say, I'm coming back, who, who must I go to to find out when you're coming back? Am I going to ask my wife when you're coming back? Am I going to ask a friend when you're coming back? Am I going to go all around the streets saying when you're going to come back? If it rains, oh, you're coming back soon. If it snows, you're coming back. If it's storm, you're coming back. None of those, those are good indications that you might come back. Yeah. But if you leave and go to the store and say, i coming back. And then you told me before you come back, i coming back for 1 o'clock. Today at 1 o'clock. And when you see my car pulling up, know that's me. I should only be about half hour. Amen. Yeah. So what am I concerned about? Or if you say I'm coming tomorrow at 9 a.m. We, we believe the words of men. If someone tells you they come at 9 a.m. to work or to bring you a thousand dollars, you will believe that, wouldn't you? Some of us. But Jesus is saying, the Lord God who is above human, who cannot lie and who cannot fail, says, I am coming back when you take this great news of the kingdom and tell it to the whole world as a witness to every nation, then I'm coming back and the end will be finished. So we as believers for the past 2,000 years have held Jesus up. Uh-oh. I know that's not a fancy thing. We have held Jesus up. Why? Jesus said, whenever you get this good news of the kingdom out around the world to every nation, and I, every nation hears about my good news of my kingdom, then I come in, the end will be finished. Oh my God. Ooh. This is going to change our gospel. Amen. And, but, but what have we been doing? We've been doing everything else besides talking about the kingdom. So Jesus is sitting on his throne waiting to come. And he's saying, I, I, there's 7 billion people in the earth, and there's still 3.5 billion people almost half of the world population who have not even heard the name of Jesus. Who doesn't know Jesus? Who hasn't heard the message of his kingdom? And we're sitting around having church. We're having wonderful activities. We're having wonderful services. Hallelujah, we're having cookouts. We're having uh, bake sales. We're having tea parties. We're having wonderful events. Fancy concerts, music production, video production, and all those are good things. Don't get me wrong, they're wonderful things, they're family things, they're for fundraisers, they're for all types of different reasons people do these things. But if it's not coupled, if it's not added with the kingdom message being preached and taught, we have wasted a whole lot of time. If the monies we've raised and we put into buildings, and equipment and material, and yet the kingdom of God is not preached in our own neighborhood. We've wasted a lot of time. We spend hours praying, even prayer, as powerful as it is. If we even spend time, Jesus said, do you know Jesus said you can pray amiss? He said you have not because you ask not, and when you ask, you ask amiss. Jesus said you could pray and ask for the wrong thing. You know what I mean? Final, Jesus said, only 10 minutes of that was kingdom. The rest of that was you, what you want, what you desire, what you would like to have for you, this one, that one, that one. Jesus said, Amen. it's good, but it hasn't even touched what I desire for my kingdom to come. We've sang many songs. Did those songs talk about his kingdom and his power and his glory? Did those songs cause him to Speed up his coming because now the world has heard about his kingdom. We spent tons of money on equipment. Did those wonderful TV and camera, music, audio, video equipment. 
help to promote the kingdom message around the world? Our own Christian lives. I'll be so caught up on what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink. Hallelujah. Where's that found? I'm still on the kingdom of God, kings and priests. Matthew 6, Jesus said 33, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus said, even in your own personal Christian life, are you spending all your time worrying about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink? Get in a car, get in a house, hallelujah, get in an education, getting married, having children. Then the children come raising the children. When the children are grown, uh, getting them married, having grandchildren, helping to raise grandchildren. I mean, I'm telling you, if you look at life, most people spend so much of their lives self-absorbed in their own desires. So much of when we stop and really evaluate our lives have been spent. Ah, hallelujah, I did medicine. I can tell you, I can tell you the hours spent in studying medical science. I'm grateful because God is now using that to reach the kingdom through medical and touching people through healing. And I get to share the gospel. But do you know, if I wasn't sharing the gospel with many of my patients and telling them about Jesus and many of them on missions and other places gave their heart to Jesus, you know I could have been the best surgeon the world has ever seen and end up in hell. You know, I could have spent my whole life studying all types of diseases and treating the best people, presidents, kings, and rulers. And if I didn't share Jesus with them or their kingdom, do you know, hallelujah, at the end of it all, I would have had nothing. Praise the Lord. I told you you were going to be blessed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you are continually blessed. And I pray that this ministry here at Kingdom Apostolic Ministry has really touched you. This message was something else. I want you to stay tuned for the next program, the next part of this message. It's going to get better. It's going to keep going. Stay with us. Love us. Email us. Contact us. Let us know about you. We'd love to hear from you. I'd love to pray for you. Pray for your family. If we can, pray for your ministry, your business, anything concerning your life. God bless you. See you again in the next Kingdom Now program. Amen. You were listening to Kingdom Come Now broadcast, brought to you by Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International, where the leaders are Apostle and Prophets, Dr. Kilafo Kali, MD, and Shalewa Kali. If this message was a blessing to you, or you would like to partner with us and make a donation, contact us at telephone 1-242-352-2130, or email us at kamgbahamas at gmail.com. Visit our website at www.kamgbahamas.com. We are located at Nios Grace Center, West Atlantic Drive, Freeport, Bahamas. Be blessed and join us again soon for another Kingdom Come Now broadcast.